Hey, hey guys, Average Joe here, and I am back. Uh, I haven't disappeared. Uh, I've been away from YouTube for the last few months while I work on upcoming products like my new selector dials. More about those in an upcoming video. But I had a backlog of ideas for videos that I've wanted to film for months and I just I hadn't gotten around to it. So over the next few days, I'm going to film a few videos to catch everyone up to speed on the latest tips, tricks, information, and also to introduce you to those badass selector dials that I've been testing for the last couple of months. So I'm going to kick this off with an updated video. It turns out that one year ago, I had a video called the Dollar Fix for broken tabs. And I talked about using an ordinary bolt to replace the broken tabs on your plates so that you could safely continue to use the plates without buying brand new ones or, or off of eBay. Uh, part of the problem is that these plates are extremely expensive when you buy them even secondhand. Uh, you know, you easily forty, fifty, eighty dollars plus per plate, and you can fix them for a dollar. In fact, the fix, once you see it, is stronger than the original tabs. So not only is this a fix for broken tabs, but if you just want your dumbbells to be stronger, you could proactively do this fix on all of your plates. Replace them all with bolts that will last for the life of your dumbbells. So it's up to you, you know, how much effort you want to put in do you want to fix you know the one tab or two tabs that are broken or fix them all and never have to worry about it again why do these tabs break two reasons uh the two main reasons one is the dropping these dumbbells they're not made to be dropped even some people will say i only dropped it six inches doesn't matter all it takes is the right impact and you can snap these tabs and, uh, and end up having to replace you know, multiple plates on your dumbbell. So you can't drop these weights. They're not made to be dropped. The second thing is body weight exercises. Devil's Press, Renegade Row. Uh, the tabs were only made to hold the weight of this plate on your dumbbell. When you're doing curls and chest presses, it wasn't made to hold your weight when you're doing a push-up, using this, uh, the, the handles, to push yourself away from the floor. Uh, you're putting a lot more stress on these tabs than they were intended to take. So they will break. Uh, it's a matter of time. For people who say, oh, I've, I've done renegade rows and they haven't broken. Well, I would take a close look at those tabs because chances are some of them have already fractured and you just haven't noticed it yet. You know, here's one that if you look at it, you go, oh, what's wrong with that, Joe? There's nothing wrong with that tab. Well, it has fractured right there. So this tab is one push-up away from, you know, popping right off and dropping this plate. So you really can't do body weight exercises with them and you can't drop them. I am trying to come up with a solution that would allow you to do body weight exercises with your Selectex. But um, it, it's, that's months, months away from me coming up with something that's uh, cost effective for you to use. So anyway, uh, the problem with my video last year was that, uh, one, I, I didn't give as much detail as I wanted to give. But also, the solution required a step that some people just don't have the tools to do that step. I had said, drill a hole, tap that hole, and then thread your bolt into the hole. The problem with that is, a lot of people have a drill. Not a lot of people have a tap and die set. And you don't want to have to go out and buy a tap just to uh, thread a, uh, a hole for a bolt. That's crazy. I wanted to go back to the drawing board and find a solution that you could do with ordinary tools that most people will have around the house. So 
Here is an example. I'll, I'll show both plates, the older style, you know, this one, and the newer style. But let's start with the new, newer style here. Um, you can see that these tabs, the structure is mounted by, you know, two rivets. And those two rivets go through to the back side of the plate. What you want to do is remove one or both rivets. Doesn't matter. You can do one or both. You can do that in a few ways. Uh, one of the ways is to cut the head of the rivet off. You, you can do that with things like a hacksaw. You can do it with, uh, you know, Dremels, uh, grinders. Basically, you want to take the head of the rivet off so that then the rivet will fall out from, you know, the backside of your uh, plate. The other thing you can do is flip your plate over instead and use a drill, maybe a 16th inch or 8th inch bit and drill through the back of the rivet, effectively, you know, drilling through here and that rivet will fall apart and come out. Once you have taken out one or both rivets, again, this rivet you must take out. This rivet, you can leave it in if you want. Once you do that, then you're going to gather a couple tools. Let me show you here what I've got. You're going to gather a, a drill with a 3 8 inch bit utility knife screwdriver can come in handy a hacksaw blade or or uh, you know grinder uh, of some sort and some thread lock that's it this is a uh, you know the tools you need for this installation you no longer need a tap and die now how do you do it well let me show you first a plate where I removed the upper rivet. So this rivet is gone and it turns out that that hole is a perfect center for your drill. You don't need to locate anything at all. It's, a, it's perfect for what you're about to do. And you're going to use your 3 8 inch bit to drill straight through perpendicular you know you want to go straight through this surface to create this opening now the steel is a mild steel this will go through it like butter if you use a little bit of oil uh, as you're drilling super easy process uh, it will not take a lot of force and you can use a relatively uh, cheap drill to to do it if you happen to have a drill press stand perfect that's that's ideal but even a hand drill can do this and you want to drill all the way through that plate now that 3 8 inch bit I picked it for a very particular reason in the past I had said oh drill a hole tap it put your bolt in no you don't need to do that anymore I looked at a bunch of different ways I can tell you uh, with a hundred percent certainty <laughs> this is by far the best way that I found it requires just two parts this is a weld nut and it has a very particular shape to it uh, two flat sides it's not a circular version they are available in circular versions you'll see why in a moment this version is the best and a corresponding bolt now this is a 5 16 bolt it's perfect absolutely perfect for this fix and the corresponding 5 16 weld nut now you can depending on the thickness of this plate you can buy different lengths of course of the bolt right and uh, that way you have enough bolt to go through the thickness into your weld nut and when it's fully tightened if there is any excess on the other side you can cut that excess off so that uh, you know it's flush with this nut now the 3 8 inch bit that we used earlier or that I mentioned earlier happens to be the same diameter 
as the 5 16 inch weld nut. Which means that I can flip this over. Let me show you on this plate here first. Flip this over, put this weld nut on here, trace with a utility knife, cut that plastic out, which is this piece here, leaving me with the profile for that nut. It fits in there beautifully. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to get it to fit flush because we're going to flip this around and press this all the way into place and this will end up flush with the surrounding plastic. You could even use a Sharpie or paint and paint this black later and it'll blend in a little bit more with the surrounding plastic. But uh, now, once you're ready and you've cut away your plastic sufficiently, you know, so that you can check it like this, make sure that you can fit this down in there, flip it around and press it all the way into place. Now, I'm not going to press this in all the way because I wanted to be able to remove it after, but um, press it all the way into place until it's flush, flip it over and put your bolt into that threaded portion. Now, I would recommend adding thread lock so that it's permanent fix, but until you make sure that you know your bolt is flush, or in this case you can see the bolt is plenty, you know, it's it's deep enough to catch the threads, but not so deep that I even have to cut anything. Had I used a longer bolt like this, and I'll show you that, had I used a longer bolt, you know, I'd end up having to cut some of this bolt to be um, flush. So you can see I'd have to cut some of this to make it flush with this metal. And remember, this, this uh, weld nut would be pushed in flat against this plate, not raised the way that I have it here just to talk about this with you. So, uh, when you've installed your bolt all the way, okay, and everything is tightened up, you want to make sure that the head of the bolt, that the head of the bolt is per perpendicular to the plate, flat here, same as here. And it turns out with a 5 16 inch bolt that the distance from here to here is about the same as the distance from here to here. Doesn't make a difference if you have 552 Series 1, Series 2, or 1090. That distance is 18 millimeters from there to there, approximately, plus or minus a fraction of a millimeter. So when you look at this here, from here to here is approximately 18 millimeters. And when you put this bolt in and you thread lock it finally into place, that's it. You will never have to repair this again. This bolt can withstand your body weight. <laughs> there's, there's nothing really uh, that's going to, that you're going to do with your exercises that will affect this bolt. It is many, many times stronger than the OEM um, uh, tab that they, they used. You're not going to crack it, fracture it, or anything. The other cool part about these 5 16 bolts is that the depth of the head of the bolt is about the same as the rivet depth, and that's very important. The reason that that's important is that these discs have a lip and you know that's how these plates are held into place when you put your disc on your dumbbell that's how that disc locks into place on your dumbbell so you want as much meat as possible but not too much so 
it turns out that the head of these bolts are about the same depth, approximately three to four millimeters deep as the original tabs, no matter if it's the metal tab or not. And these two components, the bolt and the weld nut, are about a dollar. Uh, I mean, in your area, depending on where you live, these might cost a couple dollars, but you can find them for about a dollar. This is a 5 16 bolt. In this case, um, I think I got, I think this is, I got grade eight. But um, 5 16 bolt and a 5 16 weld nut with flat sides. The reason I chose flat sides, I will show you. If I would have used an elevator bolt, this is an elevator bolt. If I would have used that, this would have interfered with this and you can't, you don't want that interference. I would have had to have ground this down. That's ridiculous, uh, it, too much effort. Uh, and you know, th this doesn't buy you anything in terms of strength. Use a nice strong weld nut and you don't have to actually weld it into place. You can epoxy it if you want, but that's overkill. Uh, you know, thread lock, put these two in from each side, and this is a permanent fix. You're never gonna, going to have to touch it again. And like I said, once this is pushed in flush, you can paint this if you want and make it black, and it will blend with the rest of your plate. Now, that's on this style. On the older style, in that old video, and I'll link to it, I talk about when this plastic cover is off, there's a metal tab under here, uh, I actually took the shell off of this plate and you can see that tab. You can see it's kind of punched into the steel. And uh, for these thin plates, I would not even bother with this. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose you could do it. You could put, you know, this on and cut this down to size. Um, but it's up to you. You know, if you want to go through that trouble, you could also just drill a hole, epoxy a bolt through, cut off the excess, and uh, call it a day on the thin plates. But on the thicker plates, you still have that punched tab, but there are multiple layers of steel. So you actually have a thick section of steel here made of multiple layers if you hammer this tab flat or grind it off then drill such that remember the magic number here is 18 millimeters so you would have to uh, grind this off or hammer it flat You'd have to um, uh, drill it and make sure that the head of the bolt that you use is at 18 millimeters right there to your bolt. And you can use the same steps. You know, once you drill this through uh, the way that I did here and you go on to the back side of this style and you use, you take your um, weld nut, use your utility knife, cut all around, flip this over, push it through, and put your bolt in through the other side, just as you would on the newer style plates. The only um, downside with these older plates is that the new plates have a natural center, right? They have that. The beauty of this plate is that that rivet forms the, the perfect center for your drill. Whereas on this one, you're going to have to measure to get the center that you want to drill um, for this for this fix. And again, you know, you can pick these up for a dollar, two dollars at a local hardware store. So, um, you know, hopefully you found this helpful in upcoming videos I'm going to uh, talk about things like the some of the other inconsistencies I found with OEM parts uh, you know if you go on eBay 
and uh, you buy used parts, there's no guarantee that those OEM parts will fit your dumbbell. And I'll, I'll talk about that in the next video. So, uh, hey guys, thanks for, uh, you know, your patience waiting for me to come out with my videos, uh, my new videos. And uh, I hope you have a great day and I will see you all in the next video.